Also in honor of this Memorial Day, Judy Woodruff introduces us to one of the country's oldest and most elite Army units. Arlington National Cemetery is widely known as the final resting place for men and women who served in our nation's military. But less is known about the Old Guard. That is the Army's oldest active duty regiment, primarily tasked with performing funerals there for our country's fallen heroes. Senator Tom Cotton, a veteran of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, wrote about the Old Guard and his experience serving with that elite unit in his new book, Sacred Duty, a soldier's tour at Arlington National Cemetery. And Senator Cotton joins me now. Welcome to the News Hour. Uh, a lot of people know you as uh, the senator, as we said, from Arkansas. You're known to be a committed conservative, but this is a book about the work you did uh, as a member of the military. You served for 16 months. Tell us about the Old Guard and tell us why you wanted to write about them. The Sacred Duty is the story of the Old Guard. Uh, I play a very small part in that story. I was there for 16 months in 2007, 2008. But the Old Guard is literally the Old Guard of the Army. Uh, it was stood up in 1784 and for 160 years it fought our nation's major conflicts. But for the last 71 years, it's been the Army's official ceremonial unit at Arlington National Cemetery. I knew when I served there that it was a special place. It was a genuine honor for me to perform those missions in Arlington. But once I got into Congress, I really appreciated just what a special place Arlington has in the hearts of our fellow citizens. Our Kansans come to visit me all the time in Washington, and they usually see the sites, and I ask them what their favorite stop was, and they almost always say Arlington National Cemetery. And I think so many Americans have that feeling as well, and no one's ever told the story of the Old Guard. Tell us about the work that they do. How is it different from, from what other service members do? Most uh, Army regiments are training for their mission, which is performed overseas defending our country, or they are already overseas performing that mission. But the Old Guard is performing its core mission, military honor funerals and ceremonies, every single day in Arlington National Cemetery and in the Capital Region. And it's a very demanding operational tempo. Soldiers take two to three months before they're even trained and certified to perform that mission because everything the Old Guard does lives up to a single simple standard, perfection, because there are no do-overs in Arlington National Cemetery. Meaning you do a funeral. We, we, so we performed, when I was there and still today, uh, up to 20 or 30 funerals a day. That means an individual soldier or his team could do six or seven funerals in a day. But every funeral is unique because for the family, that's a once in a lifetime moment and it's a lifetime in the making. And we took Vective into the cemetery, focusing on how the family saw those uh, funerals. And we wanted to make sure that everything we did was absolutely perfect so they would not have anything that marred their memory of laying their loved one to rest and so that they could go through the grieving process while we paid the honors. How do you make it perfect? It, it, talk about some of the things that, that each member of the Old Guard has to do and has to get right over and over yeah. again. So just take the uniforms. I mean, every Old Guard company has large industrial presses in its barracks, uh, just like you, know, you might see at a dry cleaning uh, store. And it takes hours and hours and hours to get those perfect razor sharp creases into the sleeves of your jacket or into the creases of your pants. Uh, it can take like I said, two to three months to learn the individual skills of how to march wearing steel-plated shoes or the collective skills of how a casket team folds a flag into a perfect triangle on a minute and 55 second schedule exactly or how a seven-man uh, firing party makes seven rifles sound like one during that three uh, volley salute. And you opened describing how precise it is on the Thursday before Memorial yeah. Day when you're placing the flag, the small American sure. flag at each grave. So last Thursday was Flags In in Arlington National Cemetery, a tradition that goes back now into its eighth decade. Uh, Old Guard soldiers take off their ceremonial blue uniforms as the last funerals of the day wind down, put on their combat fatigues and march into the cemetery carrying between them 245,000 American flags. And they put a flag in front of every grave and the standard is very precise, vertical and perpendicular to the headstone. And the way you size it out is you use your foot. So you put your toe to the headstone, you plant the flag at the heel. That means only one soldier can do each row because you can't have my size 14 feet matched uh, another soldier's size 8 feet because everything, again, is designed to achieve that standard of perfection. So over these last four days, as thousands of Americans have visited Arlington National Cemetery, they see those flags perfectly aligned and they know that in the last four days, every single person who's laid to rest in Arlington has had one of today's soldiers come by and remind 
them that they are not forgotten. Why does it matter so much? Why is, is it so important to get it exactly right? Yeah, it's not just about honoring the fallen and their families. It's also about sending the message to today's Americans that we don't forget our warriors and that we will treat all of today's soldiers in the exact same fashion. One story I tell in the book comes from Sergeant Major of the Army, Dan Daly. He was escorting a foreign military leader through Arlington. He was telling him a little bit about the old guard and what they do in Arlington. And he said that foreign military leader, without turning away from the window, looking at all those headstones, said, now I know why your soldiers fight so hard. You treat your dead better than we treat our living. And how are they chosen? How does the Army the services choose these individuals? Well, the Old Guard performs a very sensitive and very prominent uh, mission. Uh, it's the face of the Army to the family in the cemetery. It's the face of the Army to the world. So they recruit only the top-notch soldiers. It's a volunteer regiment. Many of the officers and uh, non-commissioned officers have to apply. So they have very strict height and weight standards, physical fitness standards. It gets some of the smartest soldiers in the Army, according to the Army's general intelligence test. No legal blemishes in your background or no character issues as well, because they know that the Old Guard soldier is going to have to operate in a very decentralized fashion without much oversight from senior leaders, often performing very sensitive missions. And you, you write about how they can't show any emotion. They're standing. Uh, virtually all day long, but inside that has to be hard. I mean, funeral after funeral. Yeah, so uh, we're trained to maintain ceremonial composure, whether it's at a ceremony for, say, a retiring general officer or at a funeral in Arlington National Cemetery. And that's because our job is not to grieve. Our job is to honor. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't grieve the loss of our fallen comrades, but it's our primary job is to honor him or her and honor their families. Uh, some of those families are grieving uh, in a very uh, clear and manifest way. I mean, some of them lost their loved one just a couple weeks earlier in Iraq and Afghanistan. And when you're standing near that grave and you see, you know, a mother and a father who've lost a child and a widow or widower and young children who may not understand what's going on, uh, that's an image you can't forget. But it's also something that you have to put aside in the moment so you can focus on your role, which is honoring that fallen hero. How does it strike you that you are one of the few current members of Congress who've served in the military, and I believe the only one who's performed this duty. Well, we're at something of a historic low point in the Congress, in part because our nation moved to an all-volunteer force about 40 years ago. I do think that as my generation of veterans ages and gets into our 40s and 50s in the coming years, we'll see more in Congress because the same kind of respect and reverence you see for our fallen heroes in Arlington I think you also see for our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines all around the country who are serving. I think that's a good thing. That doesn't mean we all have the same political views, far from it. But I do think it's a good thing that we'll be seeing more veterans in Congress in the years ahead. Senator Tom Cotton, the book is Sacred Duty, A Soldier's Tour at Arlington National Cemetery. Thank you. Thank you.